to have you guys here. I've been wanting to have you on Power Talk for years, but you know, you're busy people. Um, please introduce yourselves. Okay. Uh, let's start with you, Lord Simon. Thank you very much. He's busier than me. He's the busiest I'm, man. I'm not convinced. He's the busiest man in the world. <laughs> I, I think I'm busy. <laughs> But, but he's got less hair than me, so he should go. First. Wow! Oh, well, and it, we'll, we'll let the go. public decide. Though, <laughs> <watch> this. <laughs> well, uh, Simon Woolley, and um, now that, that I'm a lord, but but I can't, I'm, sometimes I'm a little, little bit embarrassed about that title because for all my life I've been Simon Woolley, right. Simon Woolley, political activist, uh, or most of my adult life. But now I'm like him, a, a peer. And and it sticks with you. You can't you can't shake it off. It's chewing gum. It's chewing gum. But I think if you use it wisely, I think if you use it for a, a mission, a vision, um, for equality, social and racial justice, then it's a good calling. Of course. But I want you to call me Simon. Okay, I will call you. Okay, we need to work this out. I was, I was with. Um, <laughs> Uh, Archbishop Angelos of the Coptic Church recently, and I did a little bit of research. And yeah. Some people call him His Eminence, so right. I started calling him that, and he was like, "No, no, 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 just call me Angelos." So it's good that you're in good company. Everyone's like, "That's it, just Simon." That's right. That's it. That's it. But I think we might have to call him Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His Lordship. His Lordship. His Lordship. <laughs> Lord Hastings, please introduce yourself. Well, I I'm Michael. Okay. Uh, Michael Hastings, but like Simon, I also have titles on the beginning and titles on the end. So I have a CBE on the end, I have a doctorate on the beginning, and I have a, a peerage, a lordship, and I have a right honourable, which he also has. Wow. But we generally don't use it in full in the House of Lords because um, right. it comes with the title of Lord. Uh, and so uh, I'm chairman of SOAS. Yeah. Um, the School of Oriental African Oriental no, that's Studies. A big deal. That's a big deal. Yes, a challenging deal. Uh, and I'm Professor of Leadership at Utah State University in the United States. Wow. And you did not mention anything about Cambridge. No, I didn't. No, um, it's my day job now. Uh, I've been left Operation Blackboat, my, my baby, for 25 years. But, you know, there comes a time when you have to say, I need a new challenge. And so I've taken on the headship of Palmerton College. And I'm told that I'm the first black man to take up such a role, either in Oxford or Cambridge. Wow. I mean, it's an honor, super challenge, big challenge. But I think, you know, that's what that's what we're here for, right? We're here to take on things that other people run away from. Yeah, yeah, and make it work. Make it work better. I mean, you you both have really played down the significance of your work, um, which I expect, but... I am, I and mean, it's amazing just to be in the company of two legends, people who I've looked up to, I've seen from afar. We've got to know each other a little bit over the last few years. You've challenged me in the in the best <laughs> ways uh, and has proved my my practice. No doubt, I I follow you on LinkedIn. I've seen a lot of the work you've you've both done. Yeah, um, and we need more people, more black men. Uh, to show us that there is another way of doing things. And I just want to say before we start, thank you for your tireless work. Thank you for always being a voice for the voiceless. Right. Um, that the, We could do a podcast this on the history of what you've done for this country, particularly yeah. for black and brown people. And I just want to say thank you. What we're here to discuss, though, <laughs> <laughs> what we're here to discuss, um, so as you're both aware, my charity, Power to Fight, mm. we, uh, the tagline is to empower communities to end youth violence. In a London context, last yeah. year, we unfortunately lost 30 young people. Mm. And that is the highest since 2008. And the vast majority of those young people were black or, mm. or brown. Mm. Um, mm. <clears throat> what we often don't have an opportunity to talk about is how we can reverse this. Mm -hmm particularly from a political uh, perspective. And I'll give you an example. So one of the things which you, you may well be both aware of is the, the public health approach, which was, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which was done in, in Glasgow. Glasgow yeah. yeah. And one of the key things which helped reverse uh, Glasgow having the, the highest crime. murder. Yeah, the Night highest crime. Murder. Yeah, yeah central. Yeah, it's the highest murder rate in, in, Europe. in Europe in 2005. Mm -hmm. It's public health approach. But one of the key things there was this uh, zero exclusions policy, which mm. they, they, they implemented. Uh, right. And this whole school to prison pipeline mm. conversation. Mm. Now, 
that's something which is not happening in England and in Wales. No. And I suppose one of the questions I've just got for you is how important is the work that you do and, and, and politics and yeah, yeah. the political landscape in this conversation around youth violence and life? Well, well, it's central. I mean, it's central because the, the thing is, is that there's this idea that some of these young black kids are born with the DNA of wanting to stab each other or wanting to, to, to not go to school and not succeed. I mean, nothing could be further from the truth, mm. right? You, you, have, you have these societal elements that if you're not careful can lead you down a path. And uh, school exclusions, I mean, Diane Abbott's been saying it mm. Mm. for 30 years, that exclude a black child, and you can almost put a, a time and date on when right. they will be incarcerated and or worse. Mm. Because, you know, if things are not happening, functioning at home, or they get caught up in gangs, and there's no structure to their lives that, that school offers, then they're easy prey yeah. to gang members. I mean, you've seen it. And, and these Upton gang members, they want vulnerable kids. Because they're th th those kids that, that often have um, a little place of mm -hmm. belonging, mm -hmm. yeah. find that belonging within that structure of the, the, the gang and, and you know as as awful as we may find it it does give them meaning to their lives mm. but then sends them down a path which is you know uh, can be heartbreaking i mean one of the first things that strikes me about this is we have to be statistically accurate and when you take the 30 you mentioned or even if you took the figure to 100 which was the case in 2019 you're still at 0.01% of the youth black population. Right. <clears throat> so you put it into context and you say, is it the case that every young black man yeah. is being stabbed or going around stabbing others? No, of course it's not the case. It is a measurable handful. Yeah. It's tragic. The greatest numbers of youth stabbings in the UK from Manchester, Birmingham and London are white on white. They're not black on black. Right. The black ones make the headlines for the very reason Simon said, which is public assumption and media assumption that this is how we behave. Right. Yes. And some of the worst cases, mm. if we're completely candid about, are the sadness of young black teenagers attacking other young black teenagers. It tends to be in the white cases much older stabbings it's <clears throat> younger in the case of the black ones but the statistics are important so i think it's important we don't damn the people we love and treasure and, and are identified with so closely absolutely but the other thing to say about that is that that being the case you know and simon has rightly pointed out the affinity that gangs and groups of street communities offer mm -hmm. one of the reasons why that affinity is stronger in the black world than in the white world, and this is deeply uncomfortable to square it, but we have to say it, is mm. that there is a greater tendency of black father absenteeism than there is in the white majority world. And that absenteeism is fundamentally critical mm. to teenage boys' post-puberty development and identity. Mm -hmm. And there's no way of getting around that one if fathers are not there I mean, it's one thing to be there. It's another thing to be mm -hmm. invested. Mm -hmm. And to be invested in your son right. and your daughter, but to be invested in them, it's not just to be physically present in a building, mm -hmm. but it is to walk the journey of their life with them. So it's interesting that you uh, look at that as being one of the key, mm -hmm. one of the... Yeah, one it's of, a measurable me figure. It's a measurable figure. <laughs> and <clears throat> and it's one of these things where I, I struggle with because... Yes. Um, Grown up with my parents di divorced, yeah, sure. um, I had an extended family, right. uh, which often happens in Caribbean families. Yeah. And an extended yeah. family, uh, and my mum did a great job. And there'd be other people I can think of who were my peers in that sure. context, and yet we didn't go down that route. Exactly. And therefore, mm -hmm. one of the things I always say, which I know you guys will be aware of, is where we do believe that, unfortunately. Um, we know it's not a black and brown issue, it's sure. an issue, but yeah. we know that it, dis, it does disproportionately impact mm -hmm. black and brown children, particularly in the London context. Yeah. And I suppose it is that hard, some of those hard truths, which we, 
we struggle with, but also how do you hold that, but also bring in the other factors, the multiple, like we spoke about school exclusions, we've spoken about poverty and yeah. multiple yeah. other things as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, you have to lay all on the table. All yeah. of it. You have to lay all, bear on the table and have an adult conversation. Now, of course, that I would I would argue 99% of, of those kids without, without uh, black fathers still go on to do good things fantastic things like like, like yourself having a father around just helps yeah it just helps it because it, you know that that i know one of the greatest things that i've done in, that i'm doing in my life is being a father to my son and i know his heartbeat and if a, if a child doesn't have that then they may look elsewhere you find the heartbeat somewhere else yeah but 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 you know we talked about why why are there's absentee fathers too well some of that too is societal it is um because the, the thing is is this is if you're going through life and you're always challenged you're too often challenged by not getting a decent job not getting a decent home you know you wrestle with yourself yeah. then you start wrestling with the, that that am i in the right relationship because you can't find that equilibrium you can't find you can't find your place yes and so you have to put all these things on and and that, so our driver's starting point, that if you make a fairer society, if you make a society in which, in which young children uh, have opportunities to be well-educated, to get a decent job, all, if not most of these things will go away. Yeah. That's right. And it, we, you mentioned the school exclusions point and, and Simon mentioned that. That is absolutely bang right. I mean, school exclusions are, should be the last ever mm. tool mm -hmm in the hands of a head or senior staff of a school, the last ever, ever, way down the line, because the aim should be to enable every young boy and every young girl to gather themselves mm -hmm. in a treasured environment in which the stresses of <clears throat> home and the context in which they're fearful, yep. which is expressed in school. Mm -hmm. I mean, all kids are doing is bringing something of the life that they're battling with on the outside yes. into the classroom. Mm -hmm. And what's necessary is to have teachers and pastoral staff and head teachers who understand the dynamics of well, the communities this really, kids come from. This is this well, this is exactly I mean, I'm glad you touched on this because we didn't speak about this before, but this is exactly the work we do. Yeah. Like we try to train teachers to become more culturally sensitive. Exactly. Understanding the context which they're working in. Often in my a previous life as a as a pastor, we'd often see many uh, majority white teachers coming from places like the exactly. Valleys of Wells, landing in yeah. inner in city, in, in a city London, and they've never seen a black mm. boy or girl before, and, and the only context or frame of reference is Top Boy or something like that. Right, right. And and that's we have to acknowledge that is problematic. But one of the things I want to mm. come back to is that you uh, you sit, you both sit in the House of Lords. Mm. Uh, you both have the opportunity to mm. influence uh, and change legislation. Right. How what would you how would you encourage the public to engage with with politics, yeah. particularly around this issue sure. of youth well, violence? Look, well, look, I've been doing I've been doing uh, black people in politics. Yeah, well, this is it. This is this is your <laughs> but he's the man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying another word no, because no, because it's about power. It's about understanding it power. Yeah, because people would distrust this process. Well, of course, and our detractors say thank you very much for not voting because right. I don't have to listen to you. Yet you understand power, you understand the levers of power, and you can start making demands. And I've been making some demands for nearly 30 years now. And one of them is, I said, look, you want to tackle the, the uh, lack of attainment in schools, you want to inspire kids, black kids to excel, then why don't you have a massive monster program to employ black teachers? Absolutely, that's the thing. Because if you had, if you had particularly black male teachers, mm. And I say to I say to to my students at Homerton that you want to change the world. You want to change the world, particularly the black the black kids. You want to change the world. Become a teacher. Mm. Become a teacher and inspire a generation to believe. Because because as you said, both with teaching critical jobs, teaching and the police in inner city areas, white people coming in, seeing that vision, what their perception of a black person is, mm. and then bringing mm. that to the classroom bringing that on the mm. streets with mm. police. Mm. It's shocking. And mm. I, I, I have seen these teachers, I've seen them with my own mm. son. Discriminate. Too, too often at the drop of a hat, yes. they default to stereotypes. Yeah, and judge. You're, you're trouble. 
Yes. You know, the black kid, the black kid might be animated. You're trouble. Why are you being aggressive? Mm. Go outside. Mm. Mama, I ain't done anything. Why are you answering back? Yeah. And the poor kid who's learning about life mm. is subject to this. Mm. 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 Black parents, we have to teach our kids. I, I remember, I remember Michael. I mean, it's, a, it's heartbreaking really, but I had to teach my 13 year old kid to sit down, sit down with him and mm. say, mm. I need to teach you son how to manage a teacher. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> how to have the dialogue. No. Those who have the authority. Well, yeah, how to have the how they will I have to say to him, they are gonna throw things at mm. you that are unfair. Mm. And I have to teach you mm. not to respond in a way mm. that will that they will then demonize you. Mm. Not the other way around. Mm. It should be the other way around, shouldn't it? Absolutely. The mm. the, the teacher, the leader understanding mm. a child's frustration. I've got to teach my son how to do it. Mm. Mm. And and if you don't, then you know the, the trajectory for them, the pathway for them, even from a middle-class family, yeah. can go skew with. Absolutely. So the big structural problems, big structural problems of uh, lack of teachers, of uh, poor jobs, stresses on the family. So it's a representation, so you're talking about it's a representation issue one of the things we would say is that we do believe that representation is 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 poor mm. but also there has to be an element of cultural competence and understanding, understanding. Well, in in the white teacher i think it's like 97 percent of all teachers in this country are white but look you see it, it, here's the thing that simon and i both as legislators yes and regulators mm. and lords get not just we we get accused of everyone who is black in the House of Commons, everyone who's black in the House of Lords gets accused of inadequacy. How many black, just, out, just before you continue, how many black um, lords. lords are lords are? Well, and let me just say this, I don't know the exact number, but there's not many active uh, black lords. And uh, about 12? Yeah, yeah. And Out and, of how many? Well, out of active, I mean, active, the yeah. active numbers in the House of Lords on a week by week basis are about 400. Right, right. Okay. So it's probably about right. 12 active. Right. That's just, yeah. sorry, please. I think, you see, you mentioned then about legislation, yeah. and we're, yeah. we're as we are doing this conversation right now, mm -hmm. we we have Simon has fought for black presence in political office mm -hmm. for thirty years. Yeah. We have a lot of black presence in political office as we sit right now, mm -hmm. but it's not empathetic. Right. It's not connected mm -hmm. to the very communities of stress and pain that it says it represents. Yeah. Because it comes into the political system and it then assumes the traditions of power yeah. as compared to yeah. the place of responsibility to represent. It's so very different. So, yes, it, I, I mean, it's, it's complicated, but let me see if I can kind of... Um, and then I will come back on something else. Go yeah, on. Sure. And let me see if I can break it down a bit. Is that to get the type of uh, black faces in high places that understand the issues that we care about, they have to come from our communities. They have to, we have to nurture them. Yes. We have to nurture them into to, office, into office, yes. and which Operation Black Voters try to do. Yeah. So you go, you go with a mindset about what your mission is. If you if you don't do it that way, and you allow people from the top to handpick people, they will co-opt them, and then this person will say, "Thank you very much for putting me in this position." And this person will say, "When I say jump, you say how high." Yes, and so they owe it to the person that's put them there, rather than the community. Right, that's brought them in. Yes. And so it's, it, and that's why we need to dignify. Let me say, uh, to put it straight, the ordinary MP, mm. because the ordinary MP, not the minister, the secretary of state, not the person with the levers of executive control, but the representative MP. It's really yeah. important to treat them with the necessary respect, because those people are the ones who carry the burdens of their community. Mm whether they're writing letters, making phone calls, inter interrupting situations, uh, interpreting what their constituents <clears> are saying <throat> to somebody who can affect a better decision. The tendency is to look at controlling people, mm. as in those in executive office, rather than just saying, we need people who come from the roots yes. to be able to understand, to affect the possibilities of others. But is it, and this is so helpful, because I think many people would say there is too much of a, a disconnect mm 
between the ordinary person Correct. on the on on the street, right? In the and community, the and the politician, the politician. And so I, I, it's not when I was at school. I thought, you know, one day I could be an MP. That yeah. never crossed my mind. But it should, and it should no, never. But, cross but here's the, the mind. but here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about that that level of politics is that we that we still need a mindset um, uh, change. Yes, because th when you think about it, the MP, us to a lesser extent, but particularly the, the MP, that we're all public servants. Right. Right. Yeah. And you are the democratic masters. Yes, mm. that's right. But you think, okay, they do what they do. No, 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 no. I mean, the thing is, too many of us are not registered to vote. Too many of us are not voting. And so we cannot influence change. I remember being in a, a part of London and saying, a black church, and they couldn't get anyone, one of their people from the church into the council. Mm. And I said to, to somebody, one of the, the, the congregation, I said, um, any of you have been to a local party? Yes. They said, yes. How many, how many people show up? Someone said, 10 people. And I said, 20. And I said, how many people attend your church on a Sunday? I said, 500. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 200. I said to them, do the maths. Yes. Do the maths. You want to, you want to see change. You want to see political change. It's a not politics is a numbers game. Cheers. And, and, Making that switch to thinking hey, that's over there. No, you go there, then you elect, you select and elect the person that's going to serve you. Yes. That's how politics works. It is. And then you walk the journey with them. With them. I mean, one of the things, and I know Simon's previous organization, uh, Operation Black Vote, did this brilliantly. But I really believe, in a, not pointing the finger at you, Ben, but let me point <laughs> the finger at you, that if, if, the, if the church is wanted or faith oh. communities wanted to put their foot on this one sure. the need to resource i mean cash mm. to oh. resource and support people oh, yeah. through training them up to understand political engagement political oh. systems what i do with all of the people who hang around me is i tell them join think tanks to right. start off with join a left wing one join a right wing one get the knowledge get the knowledge find out how people think yeah. find out about the mindsets yes. of those who end up becoming the lever controllers of power the other thing i want to say on this one is really this is something i know simon and i agree on both because we've both written about it yeah. which is is it, in this country we we have a system of policing which is policing by consent. Correct. Now, that was based on the old-fashioned notion that police were operationally independent mm. because these were people of comprehensive honor mm. whose only interest was the defense of the law and the protection of the public. We're now sitting at an awkward junction in our status of life where we don't have that confidence in the police any longer. We're not convinced mm. that a substantial proportion are for women. Or for us. Or for minorities. Mm. Or understand the law and will defend it appropriately. Yeah. Because the imbalances and injustices, which means that you either have a situation where the police are instructed, which is what happens in every other country apart from the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. instructed about how to behave racially aware, racially sensitive. Therefore, you wouldn't have stop and search because it is profoundly illogical. Well, 90%, well, in fact, it's 87% of all stop and search cases result in no questionable action or behavior. In which case, all you're doing is inflaming a community. And is you only good at your job for 13%? Exactly. <laughs> which so, I wouldn't be in the job. So there are, <laughs> now, when you think about the two things we've talked about, exclusions, which is about misunderstandings mm -hmm. and power, and power and stop and search which is about misunderstandings and power and these critically affect young black boys especially yes but for and ben but for ben ben needs answers because he's on the front line so i've already given him one churches back the people into politics operate the black votes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's essential that's one answer well second answer that i'm, I'm sorry sign then Go i'll on. shut up no 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 the three answers actually and something we both agree on to yeah. second answer is we really do need a strong father mentoring process in our communities. You know, I mentor a lot. You, you do. A you lot. I've been to your functions. house and functions and seen does, yeah. the incredible work that you do and it's inspired me and absolutely. Because, but I tell you, if, if I were to tell you the number of older men like me I challenge about mentoring a few, and they say, oh, I haven't got time. 
Mm. Oh, I don't know if I can find anything. Huh? Do you think I've got all the time? Right, the exactly. Do you think I, if, 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 I mean, come yeah. on, let's not be let's yeah. be, not be dumb about this. Every one of us has a duty to create what you said about Caribbean and African families. Create the family right. where the family biologically does not necessarily create the family. Sure. We really believe that's huge. But the third thing is, and Simon, Simon is master of a college in Cambridge. I'm chairman of a university in London. The two of us would agree, if you're going to shape minds, which is what Nelson Mandela said, is the greatest tool to shape shape the sure. mind yeah, yeah. is to empower the brain right that's what we've got we got if we're going to change things we've got to empower the brain so taking yeah. education seriously yes or, and, and therefore in helping those over the hurdle who can't afford it that's a role that communities of faith can provide so much more make sure students can get the assistance they need make sure they have the mentoring back up through secondary school to get there make sure they have the people to help them with the applications and the interviews and I mean, come on none of this is impossible yeah Absolutely. Well, it's I mean, yeah, some some great ideas, great ideas there. I mean, if I was to say to you, Ben, and I know that you're the front man, and I know that at times it must be heartbreaking. When, Very much uh, so. You, you know, you see, you see young boys go off the rails, and you you, you lose them, right? Mm. It's, it's like losing a, almost like losing a, a child. Limb. You know, because you, because you can see where where it's going to go. I mean, I think that that Michael's right in that. I mean, this cohort of like-minded black men. Uh, I would. I would implore you to to beat a path to the churches, which is difficult, I know, because too often the churches, the, the, I love the black churches. I loved, <laughs> I loved it, but there's a but, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> talk, talk the talk. This is, start this them is the, singing and swaying. No, I don't mind. Start them no, engaging. No, 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 no. We, they can sing and sway. We, we, like that, <laughs> we like that spiritual goodness, but I, I want them to look outwardly too. Yeah. And uh. too much inwardly stuff yes and the, the thing is for me is that is that in the church is the is the only kind of presence continual presence that's there and i just think if the church looked outwards and then you with the black men could take these young kids and say look we're going to do some stem learning that's we're right. going to do we're going to we're going to mark your own work when they are when they are eight nine and ten and give them the seat i'm 100 percent sure that if we had these after school clubs in churches, yes, mm. in churches as part of the community, yes, regardless of your religion, regardless, just you yes. will take you take your kid there, yeah. and it, you know, I, I I speak Spanish. I'd be happy to go to an after black after school club and teach Spanish. Yes, you you learn a language. It's a gateway in Spanish to several countries, yes, not yes. just one. Absolutely. Well, what you're touching on, I mean, it's so it's interesting. We again, it's interesting. Mm. It's gravitated to the church because mm. often what we say is that the most dangerous hour. Um, more hours mm. for young people is after school and yeah. going home. So, you, so you kind of got this kind of three fifteen to maybe six pm. And what I often say is that very much like how coffee shops are now in every corner. Yeah, yeah. Before coffee shops, uh -huh. there were churches on on yeah. every corner, but these yeah. churches are never open. Gotcha, gotcha. And therefore, the they free, could be community they, hubs. Well, they could uh, absolutely, community but hubs. there is a disconnect, and this is where I agree with both of you. There's a disconnect mm. between what. The average yeah. church, not just black churches, the churches, the average, well, the church. average churches, the white yeah. churches white, are empty. Absolutely. Well, they are. And They're completely what, empty. How do you empower them to understand that this issue is on? I'll okay. give you an example. We we struggle as an organization yeah. when it's at, when we do training. Sure. Teachers will come. Yeah. Uh, NHS yeah. staff will come. Yeah. yeah police yeah. officers will come. Yeah. yeah. Uh, community leaders will come. Yeah. Packed. You try and engage the church. Mm, mm, you know, it's mm, part of your safeguarding. You've got youth groups. Um, mm, mm. There's studies being right. done right now to say that a lot of the, particularly the black children in the criminal justice system started right. off in the church. Mm, yeah, for sure. But, no, we, don't, but we don't want to, but the church yeah. doesn't feel like this is an important well, issue. Look, I, I, think, I think the thing is, is this, that, that we're making sweeping statements about the black churches. And uh, whilst we are frustrated that wholesale, they, they don't get behind it. A lot will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, so, and a lot do. And, and so we have to work with, I, I would argue, you sew a golden thread yeah, 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 yeah. with the churches that put their hand up. Yes. And then you sit down and say, we've got this grand plan, yeah. we need these after school clubs. Imagine this for a second. This is the, this is the, the, the conversation I've been having, literally like this, mm. man to man with Prince Charles. 
And I said, I want you to lend your weight. Your, 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 your phone book is different to mine. <laughs> <laughs> the, way, the, way, the way you just dropped in, I've been having a conversation with, uh, with Prince Charles. Like, no, but, that, no, that's, but that's, that's it's, not my world. But it's, it's, it's great. It's great that you, <laughs> <laughs> you've got him on speed dial. That's brilliant. <laughs> what, what, what I'm saying to you is, is that you sew a golden thread with people that you know. <laughs> yeah. This is bigger than mine. Trust me. I mean, I don't know. Stop that. His book. Anyway, the the... So what you do is, he said, look, how can I offer support to open up um, after school clubs mm. uh, for black kids? And then I got onto Lewis Hamilton's people mm. and I said, look, Lewis Hamilton wants black engineers in Formula One, mm. but you can't get, you can't get black engineers until people start studying STEM, yes. maths and chemistry, Absolutely. and then go to the better universities. Yes. And then the Formula One garages will pick them up. Of course. But when, when they go there and they're not there, they can't choose. Yeah. So you have to go downstream. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Our kids are cool. I mean, they are, aren't they? They're just cool. It's just in the DNA. And yet, when they sit in class and then you have a, a boring maths teacher, uh, they switch off and they see the nerds getting it and they think, no, no, no. You know what I want? I want a black, cool maths teacher mm, that will say mm, mm. That, that will that will excite some I mean my son he does the he does the Bitcoin he does the mm. uh, NFT yeah they do the, 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 the their acumen yeah it's, their it's business I mean even the, the even the drug dealers even the drug dealers is their business acumen yeah their financial stunning. acumen is often uh, yeah so far smarter than mine much faster and mine too if we had maths teachers that realize these kids mm. are smart uh, but they could make these this learning cool. Yes, they would run with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the trouble is the system that we've got in terms of the, the STEM learning. It, it's for the nerds. It's seen for the nerds. But it's also trauma as well because I, I think you're absolutely right, and I, and I think the representation in in schools is is massive. Mm. But I think so many when I talk to a lot of my black peers. Uh, or, or my friends. We're black peers. Yeah. You, you, you. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah, great, great joke. Um, but when I talk to my friendship group, before we even think about becoming teachers, yeah, right. there's a trauma, yeah, there which is. we've had in a there school is. context, which is like, exactly. oh, how do we even unpack that? Yeah, yeah. I, I invited some of my old uh, oh my friends God. to my, 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 my old secondary school yeah. to do exactly that, to try and inspire, to educate teachers. Yeah. And one of them came back and just said, you know what, it was such a an incredible moment it was almost like a uh full circle moment but i also felt a relief and that i could walk back into a school where i felt so much trauma sure. now here i am yeah, yeah. and this is a guy who's, who's doing brilliant work for working for a <laughs> massive corporate bank doing brilliant but at the time nobody thought he could do that yeah. and he's gone in there and he's articulating his experience to see it was such a moment he's now inspired to do give more. him back give him so back what, what i would say to that one then because i come across a lot of guys with trauma who've had trauma um, and the trauma for all the reasons we've articulated around around the pressures of school and the, the pain of those three o'clock to seven o'clock hours yeah. and the dislocation and all of those things plus those who've seen real violence at a very young age shootings stabbings yeah. uh, stuff yeah. in the streets that no child should see but they've seen it How, the way to deal with that trauma is to allow is to take the invested time to allow men through committed relationships to mm. unpack the experiences they've had. Right. And one of the things I would just say as a generalism mm. is too much of the black male culture centers around slap and run. And, hey man, off. Yeah. And even, you know, he's like, you asked me a mega question when we came in. It had about 50 points to it. I couldn't have answered them <laughs> in five hours. But mm. the tendency not to dig deep into relationships yes. with people. And Super superficial. Isn't it? Superficial. And if we, if we dig deep with people, take the time to hear through the experiences right. which cause somebody to furrow their brows, right. cause them to be fearful and hold back, cause them- Help them out. Help them out. In I mean, space. yeah, and enable them to unpack it. Now this can take months mm. and it's, and, I, and don't put it into the bucket called therapy. Because if you mm. put it into the bucket called therapy, you then push it off into a commercial relationship, which can be very useful. Yeah. It can be whether it's NHS therapy or private therapy. Yeah. But frankly, the numbers are too vast for systems to cope. We're talking about the need for you and me and Simon to spend our time mm. hearing 
mm. the tough stories that people battle with. Yes. And to take to allow people to unpick their lives gives them the freedom to express things they've hidden. Well, let me be honest with uh, be honest with you, is that that I know you do it and I know you do it, Ben, and I can't do it. The, those tough stories, uh, the 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 long term help that uh, you need uh, on an individual basis. I can do the structural stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so and so I say I need to empower you. I need yeah. to empower you and others to do what you do. I'll play my part. Yes. I'll play my part, but but listening to some of those personal stories, I but, I, I would I, I don't know what I, I think. But I've that's been... important though to know that, uh, and it's really interesting you both said that because it's the philosophy that we have at Powerify, where we we classify it into what we say air engagement and ground engagement, mm. and um, how you. Um, I think too often we focus very much on the ground, which sure. is not a problem. Yeah, yeah. But how do you create the conduit yeah, yeah. to the air engagement, the policy, the strategy, the decision making, right. system change, yeah. uh, the macro, right. effectively, um, and empower yeah. that on the ground? Mm, mm. So, this is always our issue, and challenge. this is the challenge, and we try and bring the two together. We've well, just both articulated that mm. here is mm. the importance of knowing what role you're playing. Exactly. The place and your strengths and, 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 and linking it, and yeah, linking it. yeah, and exactly, that's brilliant, exactly. Because um, what what yeah. what you will see from both of us is you, you what we cannot be is disconnected and disengaged. The easy thing for both of us, given positions, titles, privileges, let's be, mm. black privilege. Let's mm. be honest about it. Yeah. Given all of this, is to say I'm having a fine life. Thank yeah, you very much. Where's the golf course? Correct. But that is not acceptable. Yeah, we can't live with that. Whichever one of us succeeds into being in the city or in a law firm or at the head of a hospital or somebody who's a head teacher bring or, people up bring people with you yeah. always and always look out for the circles of those who who struggle to believe it's never going to be possible for them and the make sure gift. it's possible it's a, it's the greatest gift and you know it's it's your mission i mean you know your your life's mission now is bringing hope absolutely to to a lot of young people who have little or no hope that's a big deal. And I think here's the thing is, is that we hadn't met before. And I, I knew of you, but didn't didn't know you. And it was this guy who was your friend <laughs> who said to me, you have to meet Ben. And, I, and so when he says you have to come, I say, oh, done. What yes. time? I, I don't know how, but what time? <laughs> but it's the connection. It is. It is. And so if he, if he vouches for you, that's good for me. Yeah, that's right. And that's how it should be. And that's how it should be. We should trust each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah to enable each other, to enable the person who feels there is no trust. Well, listen, I I honestly, um, this is not me just saying, I wish I had longer with you. I'd like to continue to talk as so many things that I'd like to cover, but I appreciate that you've got proper conversations <laughs> with Prince Charles. You know, you, 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 yeah, yeah, I don't know who, yeah, Lewis Hamilton and various other people. Yeah. You're probably seeing the Queen in the moment. You know, it's, it's lots of things which... You better cut that bit out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we'll edit. We'll do some edits. Don't worry. <laughs> no, but actually, the, the important thing is the important thing is, is that is that you know because of our positions, then you get asked for conversations. But the, the, the critical thing about it is is that when you're there, you bring yourself. Yes, that's you right. bring yourself and the mission there. It's not we're not there to have tea with the Queen or Prince Charles. No, no. <clears throat> we're there to to sell the the mission. Yes, and to co-op them to be part of it. And I think so. You know, it's not about oh, look at look at me, look at no, 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 no. At every juncture, in every space that you're in, you say to yourself, "How can I move the dial?" Sure. Um, and and that way you can you know we, you can live with yourself. You can say, "Yeah, that okay, it's not perfect, but I'm doing the best I can." Yeah. And what you know, one of the ways you know this, Ben, that that for me, and I've talked talked Simon about this, that I have made. A really personally engaged mission is with is with people in prison, yeah. And yeah, yeah. endlessly, yes, yeah. I mean, there isn't a week that goes, and I'm not exaggerating, a week no. that goes by yeah. when they're not on me by phone or by yeah. letter. But also, yeah. the visits are every every it's month, yeah. and, and they're and overwhelming. I've, and I've read some of them letters, and you know, it, you get somebody traumatized <laughs> and they are isolated. No. You show me some of the letters as well. And yeah. incredible. you just, I'm just like, how do you deal with how do you deal with all of that? There's a capacity though, isn't there, which we all are given in different ways. Right. And, um, right. But here's the vital point I wanted to make about it, because and just you know, one of the letters I think I showed you, mm. Ben, was 130 pages long. Yes. 
and I've had six letters from the same guy. They're now down to about 12 pages. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, because we've been working through things. But here's the point. Yeah. When I say, when I tell people in either black majority churches mm. or black community organizations about working with black people in prison, they shriek and run the other way. Right. Because even for us, right. there is a perception of negativity mm -hmm. and nastiness mm -hmm. and destruction and rejection. And if that is the pattern we adopt to those who are incarcerated, when they come out. What chance? What chance? Yeah. What chance? When 60% are reoffending and going back mm -hmm. in. And and those are the ones Michael, who are is this, is this another podcast? Can we come back and do this again on another podcast? Because we can. Otherwise, otherwise, you're going to be until two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. I definitely want you guys to come back. We'll come back. We'll, we'll come, come back because I think. It's just to get a foot. Oh, he's just warming he's just, up. He's just, he's just warming, warming up. up. And, 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 and I, so much I didn't, I didn't get to talk about the crime and police bill. You yeah. know, I know you yeah. both have got a lot um, and you've worked yeah. so hard on different aspects yes. of that. Your prison work has been incredible. I, I wanted to dig deeper into Operation Black Vote because yeah. that is Oof, it's mon it's it's monumental yeah. in, into another time. And even particularly protests and even the connections that you've made with mm -hmm. maybe people who the black community feel that we wouldn't want to be, we shouldn't be making connections with. There's so many things. So I, I definitely believe yeah. we should do a part two. Okay. But um, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you so no. much for your time. Well, let me just say, can we say thank you to you? Thank you to you, ben. To you. Honestly, honestly. Can we because... thank you but, and love you and treasure you and appreciate you? And your team, by the way. And respect you. <laughs> even though they never gave us any water. Not even no, <laughs> no, no croissant. <laughs> I had to get my, you know, this, beg for a coffee before. Yeah. If I told so, you the story the we had, we've had um, one, my main person, and we've uh, got, and, um, don't, don't. No, I'm going to say, I've got to say, yeah. she, unfortunately, she's planned this amazingly, and then she got COVID. Oh, the weekend. Wow. and this is her fiance. I don't know, oh, who oh. stepped in, stepped in the breach. In to step, well he doesn't even work for Powder Fire, but he's wow. coming. There you go. To, to, yeah, it's his, they're getting married in, in a, a month or two. No, so this you know. is good. Sort of That's it. Fantastic. Tea, tea at the House of Lords. <laughs> yeah, tea, tea on both our accounts. <laughs> yeah, we're coming. Don't worry. We're, we're coming. We're coming. But I want to say thank you so thank much. You. Appreciate you're welcome, it. Nice one. Bless, Bless you. Bless you. Good, good, good. Lovely.